In this video, I will show you how to smoothly fly between two locations anywhere in the globe in Unreal Engine using the plugin Cesium and with some blueprint scripting. This is useful for your urban maps where you need to move between different sites or even different cities or countries. You can do this for multiple locations and you can even create a UI to activate these transitions. If you want to fly between two places using the Google Maps tiles like in the scene I've opened, you can take a look at my previous video to see how to load this in first. You need to have a basic scene like this with the Cesium plugin installed and an account made. If you open up the Cesium panel by going to Window and Cesium, you can see and load in other assets too, such as Bing Maps, which don't require the Google API. And also you can have the OSN buildings load in here. I've just added them to show you that they are all geo-referenced the same and look like this. But well, let's stick with the Google Photoistic 3D tiles and delete the Bing maps. You will also need a dynamic pawn and a cesium sun sky from this panel. Next, let's set our starting location. Select the cesium geo-reference actor in the world outliner. In the details panel, go down to the origin parameters. Set them to the values of your first location for the latitude, longitude and the height. The height level needs some experimenting around with to see where it is relative to your terrain but you can always adjust at any time. And an easy way to find the coordinates of your location is to go to Google Maps, right click on any spot and copy the coordinates from there. To align the pawn with our new location Select the pawns transfer in the details panel and change the location to 000, which I already have it. Importantly, also make sure you go to the world settings, search enable, and make sure that enable world bounds checks is off. As we're going to be flying long distances, so you want to see the whole map to be shown. Also, you can go to the Cesium Sun Sky back in Outliner and in the Date and Time section, adjust the time of day and settings as needed. To animate a transition, we will need a short blueprint. We can open up the level blueprint by going up to here and pressing the level blueprint button and selecting it. The first thing we need to do is drag and drop our dynamic pawn actor from the Outliner into the blueprint since it controls our camera. Easy way to do this is to drag out the window like this and drag the actor from the outliner into our blueprint. I'll expand the blueprint so you can see it better. Then right click on a canvas, type in fly to, you can deselect the context sensitive and then pick fly to location longitude latitude height function and connect the dynamic pawn to the target. Drag a connection from the longitude latitude pin. Type make and select the make vector. Then you just fill in the coordinate values for your second location. I will choose Tokyo and copy a spot over from Google Maps like shown before for the X and the Y. Just remember that the longitude is the X value which can trip people up sometimes. And now we'll try 500 for the height. Can always be adjusted later. We now need a trigger for the transition. It could be connected to a button in the UI for example. But for now let's use the F key. Right click in the canvas and search F key. Then connect the pressed pin here to the fly component. Let's also annotate our coordinates by selecting the make vector and pressing C to create a comment. Type in whichever location you have. Also, if you check the last thread pin here, you can stop the transition mid-journey, but we will leave that off for now. 
So let's hit compile and test this out. Press play and you see us starting position in London. I will hit F and you'll see us fly through the darkness of space and land in Tokyo. We can customize the flight height and transition, which I'll go through at the end of the video. But here you can see at least that the location movements are correct. I will just press the escape key to exit play mode. And our camera has turned sideways. And this is due to the fact that our main pawn orientation is on the other side of the world in London. So easy way to fix this is just to select the dynamic pawn and hit F on the keyboard to zoom and orientate back to London. The F key allows you to zoom in on any actor that you have selected, so it's very useful. I will make one more addition to the blueprint so that we can go back and forth between two positions. So head on over to the level blueprint again. I will zoom out to make some space. And then we can copy the fly to component and the make vector component, select them and do a control C, control V. Rename the comment for the make vector to your starting location. So here I'll put in London and put in the same values that we used for the cesium geo reference at the beginning, which you can see over here under the actor at the bottom. So we can copy this over and fill out the X, Y, and the Z. We can then connect this dynamic pawn up to the target of the new component we copied over here. To go back and forth between these locations, we can use the flip-flop component. So drag off on the white pin on the F key component, select flip-flop from here, connect the B pin to the second fly to component. Now when you press F once, it will go to Tokyo. And when you press it again, it will fly to London. And you can keep doing this as many times as you like. So let's compile, go back, and test this out in play mode. I'll press F. Here I am in Tokyo again. And press F and back to London. You're still flying through space, but it works. Before I end this tutorial, I'll show you how to adjust the flight behavior. Select the dynamic point in the detail panel, and under this, you'll find the flight to component with a few parameters down here. The duration parameter here sets how many seconds the flight will take from beginning to end. So let's double that. And then there are three curve graphs that are used to control the flight journey in more detail. Let's double click the first progress curve. This controls the pawn speed throughout the flight. So the X axis represents the time during the flight and the Y axis represents the location along the flight path. So the curve is S shaped by default. So the pawn will slow down at the beginning and at the end of the flight. If you open up the height percentage curve, this controls the variation in height over the entire journey. So the X axis represents the time during the flight and the Y axis represents the pawn's height. The zero is the pawn's starting and ending height and one is the maximum height. So here max height is reached halfway through the flight. And finally, if we open up the maximum height by distance curve, this determines the relationship between the distance to travel and the maximum flight height. So X represents the distance between the start and end location, and the Y axis represents the maximum height. And the distances in this graph are meters. So here we go up to two millimeters, and hence why everything is black mid-flight. 
if we select this transform tool, we can click on one of the points and bring down the max height, let's say to half a million. If you want the flight to run along the train, let's move this even lower. Let's save this and go back to our viewport. Press play, hit F, and you can actually now see the F. Press F, you can get back again. So play around with the flight curves to get the transitions and heights you like. In regards to the speed of the towers loading, a lot depends on your internet speed, the type of computer you have, and the detail settings of your Google tiles under the geo reference. So have a look at those. With that, I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.